Hey everyone, I'm Brandon Robbins and welcome to this week's weekly video. Right now I'm standing here in our church's chapel. And in many ways, this is where our church began. This is where people worshipped for decades and decades until our church grew to be the place that it is now. And as I stand in this room, you know, I can't help but think to myself that the people who used to worship in here could have had no idea of where our church would be today. No, no ability to even conceive what God would actually end up doing. You know, I think a lot of times in our lives, we hope that God has a vision for us. We hope that God has a plan for where we might go and who we might be and what we might do. But we just don't have any idea of how to figure that out, how to discern what God's vision is. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to try to figure out how do we figure out God's vision for our lives. Now, before we get started today, if you don't mind, please take a moment to go down below and click the subscribe button. And then while you're down there, click that little notification button, that little bell next to it, so you make sure to get these videos each and every week. So what do we mean when we say God has a vision for your life? Well, it's not like God has some sort of finite plan, right? Like God hasn't planned out every step and action of your life. And it's not the removal of your free will, right? God's not taking control and kicking you out of the driver's seat. What we mean is that as Christians, we believe that God is invested in our lives, right? God didn't just create the world and then check out. God cares for us. God has desires for us. And as Christians, when Jesus is our Lord, when he's the one that we surrender our lives to and the one that we serve, we want to know what those desires are. So then the question is, how do we figure them out? How do we discern God's desires, God's vision for our lives? Maybe you've been in the same job for years and you're just thinking to yourself like, there's got to be something more to this. Or you're in a relationship and you've been thinking to yourself, I really know that God has some sort of plan and direction for this relationship. Maybe it's that you've become a Christian or you've recently re-engaged in your relationship with Jesus and you're thinking to yourself, I know God has something planned for me. God wants me to do something with this. Or maybe you've just been binge watching way too many Christmas movies already and you're thinking to yourself, I know there's got to be a bigger plan than this. Maybe. That's a tough one. Our church has actually been going through a period right now of trying to discern God's vision for our church. And we know that God wants us to be out there making disciples and telling people about Jesus and serving people in need. But we're wondering if, if maybe God has something more specific in mind, right? Is there maybe a specific group of people that God wants us to be reaching and giving the good news about Jesus? Is there a specific group of people who are in need who God wants us to serve? Is there a specific mission that God wants us to go after? What exactly is it that is God's vision for our church? Because in the end, we don't want to be out there just doing our own thing, right? We don't want to do just what's best for our church. And, and better yet, we don't want to do things that are just easy for us or, or things that we like doing, right? We really want to pursue after God's will and go after God's desires for our church. And the good news is that the same plan that we've been using to discern God's vision for our church is the same plan that you can use to discern God's vision for your life. And let me show you what I mean. In order to discern God's vision for your life, the very first thing you've got to do is pray. This is where it's got to start. Right? The temptation when it comes to figuring out God's vision for our lives is to just jump in and start doing things, right? That's how I'm wired. I like to just create a plan and then go after it. But the problem is that if that's where we start, if we just start jumping in without praying, without seeking God's guidance, then we're ultimately just going to end up in a place with a plan that is way less than what God intended. And it's ultimately going to lead in failure. Or think about it this way, right? It's like trying to put together a piece of furniture from Ikea without reading the expert instructions that have been put there in front of you. Right? You might put something together, but it's definitely not what you bought, right? You might think you're putting together a bookshelf, but in the end, you've got like 50 extra screws and something that could potentially impale a child. And so if we want to discern God's vision for our lives, we can't start with our ideas. We've really got to pray and seek God's wisdom on this. And look at what scripture says. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Jesus says in Matthew, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. Maybe you've heard this one from Jeremiah. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. 
But then check out what it says right after that. In the next verse, it says, you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. And then check out the verse after that. It says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. In other words, what it's saying is that God does have plans for our lives and God does have a vision, but God is expecting us to seek God and be in prayer. And so what does it look like to do that? What does it look like to seek God's vision through prayer? Well, I think Jesus gives us the very answer to that question in the Lord's prayer, where he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Right? What we need to do is to pray for God's will to be done in the different areas of our lives. So maybe you're not really sure what you need to be praying for. So you just pray thy will be done over the general area of your life, over everything in your life and just seek God, show me your will. Show me what it is that you want me to do. Show me your vision for my life. Or maybe you've got something very specific where you want to seek God's vision, right? Like there's a relationship where you want a vision or, or you want a vision for the work that you do or you want a vision for your future. And so you pray specifically over those areas. God, may your will be done in this relationship and may you reveal that to me. May your will be done in my job and may you reveal that to me. You just keep praying that prayer, thy will be done. And here's the thing, this prayer phase never stops. Right? Even as you begin to take action, even as you move into the next steps, you're always continually praying, continually seeking God's will, continually discerning and listening for the voice of God. But once you've spent some time just doing that, then you can move to the next phase, which is this. The next thing you want to do in order to discern God's vision for your life is to go into a period of self-discernment. As our church goes through this process of seeking God's vision, one of the things we're looking really closely at is who we are and where we are. What are our priorities? What do we say they are? And then what do our actions show that they are? What are the parts of our church that God seems to be blessing? What are the things that God doesn't seem to be blessing? What actions, what ministries really seem to be impacting people's lives? And then what are the things that we're just not even thinking about? The places we aren't giving any attention, aren't giving any prayer. We're just not even thinking about those areas. And then as we ask all of these questions and do all of this discernment, we're praying. Right? We're seeking God's will. We're searching for the truth, whether it makes us feel good or whether it's a little hard to swallow. Because we know that what may be a bitter pill from God is going to ultimately end up leading us to a really sweet blessing. This is the same way you want to discern God's will for your own life. You want to analyze and discern what are the areas of your life where you know you're being faithful to God. You know you're doing what God's asking. There's evidence of God blessing these things. And then what are the areas that you're neglecting? What are the things in your life that you're just not even praying about? A need in your community or somebody at work or something going on in your life? Because there's a chance that God might want to use you in these areas and you want to be there taking time to pray about it. Once you've asked these questions, then spend some time assessing your gifts. Right, where is it that God has blessed you with talent? What is it that you do really well? What are some experiences in your life where God really used you to make an impact? And then what skills did God use in that moment? And what would it look like to explore those and grow those more? The point of this whole self-discernment phase is to just be truly honest about where you are spiritually. Where is it that you're growing? Where is it that you're struggling? What are the gifts that God has given you? And then what are the areas where you might either be getting in the way of God or just not even thinking about what God wants to do? The point of this is to really listen to God's voice, to really self-discern what God is saying to you. Because the final step is then outside discernment. When I sensed God telling me that I had a call to ministry, I had this really incredible mentor who I shared that story with. And as he was listening to me, he said, Brandon, this is a great thing. What you're sensing right now is an inner call. But what you need to be looking for is also an outer call. You need to be looking for those people in your life who can affirm what it is that you're feeling on the inside, who can, who can confirm what God is saying to you so that you know that God is speaking not just to you, but to the people around you as well. And one of the things that I've really come to believe is that when God answers our prayers, God doesn't necessarily just give us the answer. A lot of times God speaks that answer to the people around us. And so we want to look for that outside discernment. In Proverbs it says, the way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. God uses the people around us. God doesn't just speak to us as individuals, but God speaks to us as a community. 
And sometimes the people around us can really affirm what God is saying. Sometimes they can see the things that we don't even see. And sometimes they can hold us back and they can say, you know, I see that you really sense God saying this, but what I'm hearing is it might actually look more like this. And they can help us to discern what God's answers are to our prayers, what God's vision is for our lives. As a church, as we go through this process of trying to discern our vision, we realize the importance of that outside discernment. And so we're going to be inviting people in from the outside to really give us their opinions, give us their feedback, give us their perspective. We're going to ask people who've never been to our church before to come and to attend a worship service and tell us, were we really as friendly as we think we are? Were our beliefs really clear and obvious? What did they love about the service? What didn't they love? We're going to go outside of the walls of our church and talk to people in the community to find out what really are the needs of the community. Is the work that we're doing really helping? Is it really making a difference? Are there things that we could be doing that we don't know about? What is God speaking through them? To discern God's vision for your life, you've got to spend time in prayer. You've got to spend time in self-discernment. And then you've also got to look outside to those people who God is speaking through to give you the answers. Ask them what they think your strengths are, how they think you can grow, or where they might see God calling you and what kind of work God could be calling you to do. What do they think your skills and your gifts and all those other things are? Ask them to pray for you and really help you with this process of discernment. The truth is God doesn't intend for you to take this journey alone. And if God really does have a vision for your life, it's not too much to assume that God is bringing other people in to be a part of this vision. And so this is the process that goes into being able to discern God's vision for your life, but Then the question is, what do you do next? Well, like we said in the beginning, the very first thing, the very most important thing is that you've got to begin with prayer. And you've got to spend some time, a concerted amount of time, really just praying for God to break through. My challenge for you is this. I want to challenge you to take 90 days and commit to pray for 90 straight days. 90 days equals three months. It's three sets of 30 days. And in the Bible, the number three represents wholeness and completeness and perfection. And that's what we want to seek. You want to invite God to make God's vision complete in your life. During this month, I also want to challenge you to pick a time of day to pray, right? This really helps you to keep it structured. For instance, at our church, as we go through this period of discernment, we pray twice a day at 757, right? That's the area code that we live in. And so we pray at 757 twice a day. And so if you're a part of our church or if you just want to, I want to encourage you to pray for our church at 757 each day. Pray that God will help us with our vision. And then spend some time figuring out what is that time of day that really works for you, right? Maybe you pray at 633 to go along with Matthew 633. Or maybe you find some other time that really seems significant, that prompts you to pray. Set yourself a reminder on your phone. Get a group of people to pray with you. Make sure that it is a consistent part of your life and that it's built into your schedule. And that last part's really key, right? You want to invite other people to pray alongside you. They don't necessarily need to give you advice. They don't need to say anything to you or give you any sort of wisdom yet, but just invite them to pray. Because if they're going to be a part of that journey with you, you want them to begin at the same place you're beginning. You want them to begin with prayer. And so begin with prayer, right? Set a season of prayer, pick a time of day to pray, and invite other people to pray with you. And you're going to be well on your way to being able to discern God's vision for your life. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you don't mind, please take a minute and go down there and click the subscribe button below. And then while you're down there, go ahead and leave us a comment in the comment section. Let us know when you're going to pray, right? How we can be praying for you, what time you're going to pray, and if there's any other ideas for videos you'd like to see that would help you to grow spiritually. That's it for this week, and we'll see you next time.